Hey, thanks for joining us for Next Up. This is the second half of Donnybrook when we talk to community leaders. And this guy is not just a community leader, he's a national leader. He's done the play-by-play -play for 23 World Series, nationally televised, six Super Bowls. In fact, he's in the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, got the Pete Rosell Award. He has eight Emmys. He's a New York Times best-selling author. And uh, he's now finally completing an otherwise perfect career by appearing on Next Up <laughs> on 9PBS. <laughs> Joe Buck, how the heck are you? Good, guys. How are you? You know, it I, I just occurred to me, Elvin, this is the first Pete Rosell Award winner to also be on Next Up. Oh, there you go. What a distinction. Exactly. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was part of my speech. Uh, if you guys <laughs> ever got a copy of it, I talked about being on Next Up. And now to check this box, uh, I can pretty much go to my eternal rest. Well, there you go. Well, I can match my one regional Emmy with your eight national <laughs> Emmys. Okay. We, we don't need to talk about <laughs> Emmys or any of that other stuff. That, that I don't get how any of that. And the New York Times bestseller, we've all figured out that's a scam. But I don't think so. It is. I think it's only it given is. to those who sell a lot of books. Yeah, no, I don't think I did. I, I, I don't think, think you did. No, I don't think I did. I, you can't find it anymore. Uh, they didn't make their money back. I, it's, it's, have, have you been to a library? Uh, no, yeah. not in a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you hang out at libraries. Well, I don't. I'm, and I know that's a surprise to everybody out there. I don't go to libraries. Hey, um, one of the all-time greats and your former broadcast partner, Mike Shannon, 50 years in the broadcast booth, passed away this week at the age of 83. You probably could write a book uh, just on Mike I could. Shannon. I could. I mean, I loved him. And, and I was so lucky, guys, when I look back at it, um, you know, I grew up in the back of that booth. Literally, I uh, was down there every night of the summer, down there during school nights, hanging around with his son, Danny, making too much noise, getting the glare from my dad and Mike, like, will you two kids shut up back there? And then within 10 years, I'm his broadcast partner. And, and for him to welcome me into the booth the way he did was just a, a beautiful uh, gesture on his part. It didn't have to be that way, but uh, that's the road he took. And I'm forever grateful because I would not have started my career with the Cardinals a, if my last name wasn't Buck, and B, if uh, the guy named Shannon wasn't cool with it. I, I used uh, the quote that you had on Twitter about uh, your dad taught you everything you knew about broadcasting, but Mike Shannon taught you about baseball. Yeah. And was that, that was probably more the culture of baseball, because you knew how to play baseball. I yeah, mean, I, no, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right, and it's good to make that distinction. I, I think baseball and all that goes into Major League Baseball, I, I knew about balls, strikes, how many outs, all that other stuff, but it was... The nuanced stuff that that I think you see, uh, you know, off to the side. Or if you're if you're Mike, he had such a keen eye for what he was watching that uh, he was aware of of all nine defensive players. He was uh, aware of the lineup. He, he was basically managing games from the booth. And I, I know the Shannonisms, the list of Shannonisms. Uh, it is long and it is distinguished, but he was an extremely intelligent. Uh, very common sense, smart man, and I, I was lucky to be around him really my entire life. And, and a unique style. You know, when people like you succeed, a lot of broadcasters emulate your style. Probably the same was true with your dad, Bob Costas, but you can't really claim that Mike Shannon borrowed someone's style. No. And, and that, that's kind of refreshing when you hear it in a Johnny Most in Boston or a Herb Score in Cleveland. You know, guys who don't fit the mold and... Uh, didn't copy anybody, and nobody's going to copy them. Yeah, I, it's almost, you know, when Tony Romo burst onto the yeah. scene with, with the NFL coverage, it was almost like he had never heard anybody else do a game. Mm -hmm. Because most people that get into it try to sound like what they've heard and try to sound like other people. I, I would say that a lot of people out there kind of sound like John Madden-ish on the NFL coverage. Mike, Tony, when he started, uh, they just came at it with a new angle and a fresh angle, and, and that was Mike. I mean... I can't tell you how many people are like, oh, how many beers did Shannon have in the booth? Like, he had none. That was, you know, that, that was his mind. And sometimes stuff came out a little sideways, but uh, there was some weird logic baked into whatever the heck he was saying. And that was just the way he saw the world. And, and it made him, I, I think, one of the most interesting guys I've ever been around. Do you miss baseball? Uh, I mean, I know every other week there's a, you know, a comment or something like, Oh, I wish Joe Buck was back doing baseball. I wish he would do baseball here in St. Louis. Yeah, my, my comment to that is where the hell were you people when I was doing it? Uh, uh, do I miss it? Yeah, a little bit. I'm kind of getting itchy uh, sitting around, you know, waiting for the NFL season to start. I'm used to working 
a lot at this time. And I remember as a kid, I heard my dad one time say to somebody, you know, I've been traveling so much lately, I passed myself in the airport the other day. <laughs> and I didn't really get it at the time, but as I started to grow and do more and more events, it's like, man, here I am back at the airport. And now it's like, can I go to the airport and go somewhere and work? Uh, I, yeah, I, do I miss baseball? I don't miss 9 and 21 or whatever they are right now. But, uh, but yeah, I, I miss keeping my mind active and doing stuff like that. Did you feel like you had to, in times like this, put kind of a happy face on it? Or Because I, yeah. I know in, in other cities they just pile on as opposed to like, eh, well, you know, it's it, whatever. But You know, it, it kind of points out the whole difference between doing the national game and doing the local game. Mm -hmm. The local game, you got to kind of go with soft uh, approaches from time to time. And when the team's not playing well, and they're not playing well, and they'd be the first to tell you, you kind of have to soft pedal it. But eventually, my, my thought on that was always, if you can't be honest when it's not good, people aren't going to believe you when it is good. So that was always kind of my defense to, to management. I only got called on the carpet one time as the Cardinals announcer, and that was kind of my defense. Like, hey, this team's not good right now, but when they're good, they're, the, the, people start to believe. You have to have some credibility in that. Mm -hmm. So it's a different job. If, if I was doing the national game, uh, you know, you talk about the Angels for three days and, and you'd have probably not nice things to say about the Cardinals. Well, what do you think, Joe, is going on with this team? Have you followed them close oh, enough? Oh, yeah, to yeah. I mean, I, I just think it's starting rotation. I, I think that infects a whole roster, and I think when a team goes to the ballpark knowing that that pitching matchup is not in their favor that day, I think it affects a lot of different parts of the team. It makes everybody uh, squeeze a little bit. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I think... Lineup-wise, they've got a ton of talent. I, I want to see Jordan Walker back here. I want to see that kid soar because I think he's a superstar waiting to happen. And I think you have to live with some of the mistakes that, that a young guy like that's going to gonna make. But that guy needs to be in the lineup. Matthew Libertor, the guy they traded for, uh, I think should be in the rotation. But these are just my opinions. I, I think the starting rotation is not good enough. And that has everybody pressing on the team. And you're not seeing... You know what that team could be. Am I crazy? I still think the Cardinals are going to win the division. I really do. Well, I mean, they're not chasing the, you know, the, the 27 Yankees. <laughs> yeah. or they, they, it's the Pirates at mm -hmm. the top of the division. And, you know, you got to tip your cap because it's been a long time and they're playing well. But I don't know that they're built for the long haul. Uh, but the pitching's got to get better. If the pitching doesn't get better, the answer to that is yes, you're crazy. Okay. How, how does a guy uh, prepare for a broadcast when you have 100 million viewers and that's actually a little low when you count the number of people who watch the super bowl these days yeah. it's like it's 112 million it, i mean do, do you eat beforehand uh, can not you not much um it, it's it's like the age old you know whatever you do don't look down and then you look down well, don't touch this hot plate it's like oh yeah they were right you have to fight the urge to think about the size of the audience it should be no different than doing the nfc championship game or a game in September or a minor league game that I did in Louisville. I should put the same amount of effort into each of those broadcasts, and it shouldn't matter how many people are watching. But when you know 100 million people are watching, mm. and, yeah, it, it will make you a little <laughs> hesitant mm -hmm. and rethink everything that comes out of your mouth until you get into the flow of the game and you just do the game. But it's, it's hard to put out of your mind. Well, the Super Bowl's a long way away, but... When will you go into football mode? When uh, does the, when is the request that okay you're now working again? It's, is that July or is no? That, I mean, I got to be honest with you. It's hard these days with player movement, salary cap issues. Um, you know, we just had the draft. It's hard to take days off. I I try to read some about okay. each team in the league, pretty much every day. Um, if I was hooked up to a lie detector right now. And I said I read it every day. That would be a lie. But I, I think once, yeah, July camp is happening. August, I'll do a preseason game. September, you're, you, you have to know what's going on. It, you can't be like, oh, hey, it's uh, the first week of the NFL season. Let's see who the Cowboys drafted. You have to know that. And it, you can't play catch up with that many teams and that many uh, little bits of news. Did you go to the Super Bowl last year? Uh, I did not. I went to the one in L.A. because my daughter wanted to go with her boyfriend, so I bought four tickets, and that was a lot of money 
to mm. see a game that I didn't care about. <laughs> I died. Well, you know, with the success and the popularity of the Battle Hawks, mm, yeah. uh, yes. yes, you can imagine there are a lot of St. Louisans who are saying, "Okay, we're a great football town." Is there a chance that we are a great football town? Okay, will the NFL ever come back to St. Louis? I would never say never. Um, you know, I think this whole lawsuit and 900 million our way probably doesn't help the cause. But I think the the proof is in how many people walk through the turnstiles at a Battle Hawks game. I, and I work at ESPN. I had executives sending me article after article about this incredible response by the community here in St. Louis. Those are $18 tickets. It's a different thing. But I, I, th I, I have always said this is a great football town. It's not just a great sports town. This is no. a great football town. And when the Rams were good, forget when they were great. When they were good, that was a hard ticket to get, to get into that dome. And I think, I, I think a national crowd forgets that. But I, I would never say never, but I, I would put it uh, less than 50 -50. Now, now, If I could just jump in real quickly. No. When, when the Rams were about to leave, you were openly critical of Stan Kroenke and his attitude towards St. Louis. Did that ever hurt you professionally because he was a powerful uh, I, NFL owner? I got up to the line. Uh, I, I got up to the edge and looked over and saw the end of my career at the bottom, and I went, okay, it's time to stop tweeting now. And uh, I walked back, and, and he and I have had a moment. We had it when you talked about getting the Pete Rozelle Award. I walked up to him. You know, I said what I said. I meant what I said. Uh, but I think at some point it's not up to stand to save the city of St. Louis. Like, there's a lot of things that need to get better mm -hmm. in downtown St. Louis. And, you know, he was the owner of the team. He took him to Los Angeles, and... I, I have to respect that, and, uh, you know, we had our little handshake, and everything's good with that. But, I, yeah, I, I, took, I, I took my career into my own thumbs mm. tweeting about that stuff. D did Troy Aikman ever take his phone out and say, Jerry wants to talk to you yeah, about something? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah there's, there's plenty of uh, – we haven't made friends everywhere in the broadcast booth. Uh, I didn't make friends with the, uh, with the Kroenke family at that time, but, but we're good now. Okay. All right. So, all right. Um, like you say, you got too much time on your hands. You're yes. reading and all that. I went through a little, you know, period of like, oh, I got to take the girls to school and, had, you know, and like just yeah. had some time. And it was kind of cool. And it's it great. seems like you had a little bit of that yourself. I got to be honest with you. When, you know, I've had two sets of kids. So I've got daughters that are in their 20s and they're living in New York. And I've got boys who are five, twin boys. Mm -hmm. And even back when my girls were growing up, mm -hmm. With my friends that were nine to fivers or whatever, were going to work every day. I was working on the weekends, but Monday through most of Friday, I was involved. And, and I had more time with my kids than any of my friends then. And I still think, I know I have more time with my kids because of my schedule now than, than anybody else. I mean, my wife Michelle and I went to the boys' school today and did uh, a parent activity where we had five-year-olds interview one another. Oh, okay. Uh, and it was really, it didn't go over big. I, uh, <laughs> we started, we were like, okay, let's wrap this up. And one of the kids, Theo, was like, are we going to do anything fun? Mm. So uh, as a parent activity, Michelle and I failed, but uh, we, we tried. We you, did our best. You know, uh, our mutual friend, Aaron Shannon, daughter, Dr. Aaron Shannon, daughter of uh, Mike Shannon, once said, uh, she, she was saying that, when she was growing up, she'd be at a table in a restaurant and with her parents, and people would come up and hog all of her dad's time, right? Because they wanted to see Mike sure. Shannon. Yeah. You know, from the World Series to the broadcast booth, he was a big deal in St. Louis. But she pointed out the other side of that is the, the friendly fan was taking time away from her time with her dad. Are you, like, conscious about that with your kids? Yeah, I mean, but... I, I don't think I think I can honestly say I've I've never uh, not welcomed somebody up to our table to say hello. Um, you know I had a great example of that with my dad. So when we would have our family dinners at Canetto's or wherever we were, uh, we spent time with Bob from uh, Arkansas who met my dad in 1968 and wanted to come back and say hi. And it's like hey, 
haven't seen my dad in two weeks, but go ahead, pull up a chair. And uh, <laughs> nice to meet you, Bob, from uh, from Arkansas. But I, it's just part of the deal. You can't fight that. And I had the best example of that, so I, I try to carry that forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom will, I used your name. This is a few years back, really, when I first started doing this show. And I said, like, I, you know, just be sitting someplace and somebody said, like, hey, I like you on Donnybrook or whatever. And I told my mom, I said, like, I don't know how people like Joe Buck do it because they'll come up and talk to me and I'm like on this half hour show on Channel 9. I could just imagine being a national celebrity broadcaster because if, I, if I'm in New York City, nobody knows who I am. You know, like, I get more it's, it's, trouble from people in New York City <laughs> or Boston or wherever. Like, hey, why do you hate the Yankees? And it's like, I don't hate the Yankees. Exactly. I, I hate don't fans, particularly right? like you. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, it's every, and in St. Louis, I would say people pretty much it's kind of like, oh, hey. You know, it's, it's not. And, and I, I would never be that person like, oh, my God, people are bothering me and I'm uh, – like I'm Harry Styles or somebody sitting mm -hmm. at, at Starbucks. I'm just, you know, a mm -hmm. baseball announcer. And you bought, oh, oh, go ahead. Now, I, I'm just saying, I was in Europe a couple of times, and both times, really coincidentally, I think I emailed you about this, there were promos for Joe Buck on television. It was for the NFL, but you were on the promos. I thought, oh, my gosh. I, mean, I remember back in 1998, I was in Germany, and that was the, you know, M McGuire's race on the Marist yeah. record. There's Joe Buck on television. And then uh, last fall... I turn on the television in France, and who's on but Joe Buck talking about the really? NFL? Really? Every time I go with my wife and I go to France, we're looking at Richard Quest of CNN. <laughs> but what is going on in this Miss Richard Quest? Can, can you get away? I mean, as Alvin points out, can you actually get yeah, away? Yeah, we, we do go to Europe for that reason. You know, I, I've i never been stopped in Europe by anybody going, hey, how about the, uh, how about the Mets? The Sox. The yeah, Sox how about the Sox? Why do you hate the yeah. Sox? Uh, it's it's just it just you just blend in, which is nice. All right. Okay, so we're in Europe now, so let's talk a little yeah. football, soccer. Yeah, you got to be amazed at uh, the yeah. expansion team that we have and the and uh, how people are really gravitating uh, to the SC City. Yeah, I, I think it's great. I, I th it it just it points out that you know when you think about the Taylor family and all that they've done for this city. I, I don't know where we would be, but but laying out that kind of capital to bring the team here, to build that stadium, and then you see what pops up around it. And that was kind of my, that was my disappointment with the Rams. It was like, hey, okay, the NFL's leaving again, but what I was excited about was a potential riverfront yeah. open-air stadium and kind of revitalize the north end of downtown and get, you know, what, what Ballpark Village was, which was what excited my dad when this version of Bush Stadium came along. So I, I think it, it's a means to an end, and, I, and I'm... I'm blown away. I, I want to go to a game. I've bought, I, I bought the MLS package on Apple Plus or Apple TV because I want to follow the team. And I, I think it's a great feather in our cap as, as a city. Uh, and and it, it makes it's another source of pride for us in uh, in what I think is is a great city. Well, I think you've done a lot for the city. I know June fifth is the next Joe Buck Classic at uh, Old Warson, and yeah. you've been doing this in passionate anonymity for years. Nobody knows about it, but you bring in top movie stars and athletes. I know Rush Limbaugh used to fly in on his own dime. We had everybody coming yeah. in, and and yeah, he did on his own dime. Um, and, and you literally raised. What, millions for the Joe Buck Imaging Center? Yeah, so it's the Imaging Center. We've kind of made that part of Children's Hospital as user-friendly as it can be. So, you know, if a kid's going in for a CAT scan or an MRI, they're scared. And so are the parents. And so we've tried to make it a little bit more fun in that area with video games and, you know, uh, autographed jerseys and uh, like a cross-section of a soccer cleat and just things to look at. And I just remember as a kid when, when uh, my wife and I were down there looking at uh, basically each other going, we, our daughter Natalie was being tested for cystic fibrosis and I'm looking at the train go around and I'm watching these incredible doctors and caregivers and what they deal with every day. And I thought, you know, I, if I'm ever in a position where I can give back, this is the place where I want to give back. And fortunately, that came to pass. And here we are 21, 22 years later, and we've raised 9 or $10 million for wow. the hospital. And I know you get asked to do a lot, don't you? Yeah, but but I, nobody got asked to do more than my dad. Yeah, my dad point. was laying there in Barnes Hospital for seven months, still raising money uh, with a poster he had made to benefit Matthews Dickey Boys and Girls Club. I, I mean, he he was a giver. And when he first came to St. Louis, 
He took every event he could. He was at every speaking engagement, fundraiser, whatever it was. And, and I saw that in, in his, you know, willingness to never stop trying to make a difference. And I've tried to do that as well. Your dad, in uh, his autobiography, That's a Winner, said, uh, you know, the, the house always wins. And he's talking about gambling. And I, and I know you later wrote that he gambled a bit in his yeah. life. But Total he, degenerate. He, yeah, there you go. <laughs> he thought that you shouldn't get into a casino if you were on public assistance. He wrote that. How do you feel about the legalization of sports gambling in Missouri? It just seems like in Missouri, it just seems like it's everywhere around us. And it's kind of silly for somebody to get in their car and drive across a state border, place a bet, and then drive back and hope that they win. I mean, I, it's just a tidal wave. You can't. It's everywhere. So, uh, you know, if, if the tax dollars that come off it go to something good, I'm all for it. So uh, I know the Cardinals have been fighting hard for it. Uh, and if it's all around us, I, I feel like uh, maybe that's not a great reason, but I, I, I'm not against it. Everybody looking at the show is looking at me right Why now. Are you <laughs> no, no, I love it. And I'm the hustler that goes over to Illinois. Yeah. Not that often, but I've said the same thing. Like, come on. It's, it's just silly. It's I, silly, right. Well, it's, 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 uh, let me uh, just channel. What's the, what's the, channel the argument book. against it? Well, you know, the studies show, Joe, that a lot of Americans, most of them, don't have $600 for an emergency. And so now we're kind of sanctioning a sport where the house almost always, always wins. I mean, in the long so run. So those people could not get to Illinois to, their, to place that? Well, it's just when, don't or, do you think when you sanction something, you're kind of saying, at least in an indirect way, this activity yes. is okay? But yes. no, I, I, I would agree yes. with that, but okay. So... Along those same lines, who you got in the derby? On right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I haven't even looked. I, I do not have the gambling gene, thank God. Yeah. It's skipped. I think it's per stirpes is the legal uh, yeah. term. Mm. It's skipped a generation, so my kids are going to gamble their you know what's off. I just don't care about who, gambling. Who's got herpes? Yes, <laughs> yeah. uh, my kids. <laughs> somebody, no. yeah, somebody just tuned yeah, in. Uh, and like, yeah, what? Yeah. what are they talking about? What are they talking about? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I you make a great, I, you make a great point. Uh, but I just feel like the it's it's kind of it's that fights cats over. out of the bag cats or out of the, the bag cows out of the barn cows yeah. out of the barn <laughs> not coming back in <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't it's not anything that keeps me up at night you also mentioned you. your dad in, in your book when he was at Canetto's he would write all, everything he owned and figure out <laughs> his network yeah. Could you, uh, with a felt tip you a, marker. If I gave you a pen, could yes. you do that right now? No, uh, I, I am so, I'm a moron. <laughs> and and I, I don't know what I have, where it is. Is that right, really? I have no idea. So Robert Minkler, my uh, CPA and college roommate, oh. uh, my accountant, yeah, I, he, he's laughing somewhere because I, I don't know. The New York Times said that you are now one of the highest paid sports broadcasters. Well, hell, hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 Go New York Times. Right. Well, I was looking for your name They're on right. that list of uh, athletes that just yeah. came out. Right. I'm not, you're, you're not I, making that no, 95 million no, a year. I'm not. Uh, yeah, it goes uh, like Neymar and then me. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not on that list. Oh, my God. We've only got a handful of minutes left. Oh, did we just get a signal? Oh, down to a precious four. Right, yeah. Uh, Joe, you what an odd sign. Hey. See, why four? We, well, that means four minutes till we wrap up. I, un I know what that means, yeah. but I would think it'd be five. And well, then one. We're, we're, oh, we're, it's in my contract. No number is easily divisible by five. <laughs> no, I don't say we're public TV, so we only have so many little okay, platforms, right, so we right. have to skip. All right, good. <laughs> Wait till she gets to pie. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you've always you've always resided in St. Louis. There was never a time where you didn't have, like, have a no. residence here. You, yeah. Uh, Are you asking for, like, <laughs> my <laughs> tax records or something? <laughs> I, yes, no. I've, 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 <laughs> I, have, uh, I have lived in St. Louis my entire life, and... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I would ever leave. I, life is great here, and uh, I wish there were more flights coming in and out of down, uh, in and out of our airport. But uh, other than that, I, it's just life is good. And when I'm here, I, I, I'm relaxed because I'm home. So it, it's mm -hmm. it's it's in my DNA. I want to take you back to baseball real quick. Uh, the new rules. You like them? The pitch clock. I do. I do a too. A few right? years too late for yeah, me. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. You yeah. got home 45 minutes earlier. Oh my god! Night. And some of those Yankees Red Sox games over the years were nine inning, four hour games. Yeah. It's just the way they got played. But yeah, I you know because they couldn't do it themselves, the players. So it's like okay, we're going to mandate a pitch clock. Okay, we're not going to do a shift because 
for a while now, everybody's been on one side of the infield and nobody's shown the ability to hit it the other way and just get on base and make something happen. So they had to legislate against all that stuff. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm for it because I think it's made it a better game. Mm, you know, um, Bill White said... Mm, you, no, that means that? Mm, very interesting. Oh, okay. yes. I, oh. I was like, mm, I don't agree. No, no, it's mm, fascinating. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yes. Bill White says that Phil Rizzuto used to leave, uh, you know, in the ninth inning and drive home. Yes. Did you ever do that <laughs> and let your partner take over? What is this like the... Yes. This is like the Harry Carey, Will Ferrell part of it. Did you ever do? Hey, no. I did mean, you ever leave in the ninth inning? You were talking about no. how long I, the games yes, were. No, honest. I can honestly sit here and say, if there was a lie detector or not, I have stayed to the completion of every game that I've broadcast. Because there are some Donny Brooks when I just tail out of here. Yeah, I know. No, you're you're not here when you're doing the show most of the time. <laughs> Line of the night. Yeah, that'll be on Twitter. Yeah. Are we gonna get tweeted at? Let's, let me see what I've made people mad about uh my salary uh the fact that i was okay with gambling i don't think anyone's upset with either opinion you know that's donny bash donny oh, brook yeah, yeah. Right. well whatever but i don't go your, on there. loved your dad and i always tell the story so like your dad had said on the radio one time one of those things that you couldn't say now oh. delino de shields had just came up and he said like i started the first game he said delino de shields he said his mom must have been playing Scrabble when she went into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh and I was, I think I was in Danville. I don't know, the first paper I worked at. And I just like was driving or sitting down. I just laughed. Yeah. And I think like that was, I always remembered the lines I had. Mike had them too. Oh, yeah. And I was like, man, you can't even say stuff like that. <laughs> no, you got to watch everything that comes out of your mouth. Did you walk a few things back through the years? Uh, not too much. Yeah, good for you. Things. A few things here and there. Randy Moss, that stuff. I still get that thrown. Oh, that was great. But, yeah, uh, was we, we're also proud to be, you know, like basking in your glory, your reflected glow. St. Louis and <laughs> Joe Buck, tremendous. Thank you very much Thank for joining us. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Honor, honor yeah. and a pleasure. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. You didn't even get to all your other projects. I mean, it's amazing because Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.